to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. There's an interesting lecture coming up at the University of Newcastle. It's entitled Religious Freedom in a Multicultural World. And joining us this morning is Associate Professor Neil Foster, who is from the University of Newcastle Law Studio, talking about this very interesting idea of freedom of faith in a multicultural world. Pretty timely conversation, Neil. Hello and welcome. Thank you, Meryl. Uh, It's very good to be here. Yes, it's very timely. There are lots of issues that uh, come up uh, all the time. And in fact, uh, I noticed this morning there were a couple of things on the news about uh, issues about protests about a mosque happening down in Victoria and uh, issues about uh, head coverings overseas. So yeah, all sorts of stuff comes up fairly regularly. Can we start potentially asking, I know it's a basic question, but it's one that I think is a good spot to start in. What is religious freedom? I guess religious freedom is uh, recognised as a human right in um, uh, around the world. And the nature of it is that we recognise that people um, shape their lives in accordance with their most fundamental convictions about the universe and about the meaning of life. And uh, so in particularly in, in Western liberal democracies, uh, we actually recognise that that's an important aspect of the autonomy that people have to actually uh, come to their own views about the meaning of the universe and to live in accordance with those convictions. So that's the sort of area we're talking about in religious freedom. Religious freedom has been recognised uh, for many years. Uh, the High Court of Australia called it uh, the paradigm freedom of conscience and the essence of a free society. So. Um, now, having said that, of course, we immediately need to say that, like all other freedoms, it um, has to recognise uh, that there can be clashes between different rights, and uh, so you need to accommodate uh, people's uh, religious freedom with other people's rights. But it's a fundamentally important um, issue that uh, people live, be able to live out their lives in accordance uh, with those deep religious convictions. Is it akin to freedom of speech in that we all have a right to freedom of speech. However, the second element of that equation, if you like, is the caveat. We also have a responsibility in terms of that right. So in other words, you're welcome to have an opinion and you're free to have an opinion. Whether or not you're free to bestow it on others is often the thing that's debated. Is it like that? You're free to have a faith, whether or not you force it or indeed you know share it with other people is is that part of the responsibility that you have in having that faith so you're quite right to say that uh, freedom of speech is qualified by certain interests and the classic example of that is that you can't use your speech to uh, cause a stampede in a theater by shelling fire or something or defaming mm. people mm. In, a, in a in the same way religious freedom is an important right um, but it uh, it has to be balanced in certain circumstances with other people's rights um, however, I'd want to um, make sure we realise that religious freedom as recognised in international human rights uh, conventions and in Australia is not just restricted to the right to have an opinion. It's actually restricted, it actually extends to the right to live in accordance with your religious freedom, uh, to live in accordance with your fundamental beliefs, um, subject to uh, reasonable qualifications. But I, I'd, I'd want to resist the idea that it's mm. just a right to go to church on a Sunday or something like that. We, we say that religious freedom actually recognises people's rights to live in accordance with their, um, with, their, uh, with their convictions. And the various statements of religious freedom in the law recognise the right to uh, free exercise of religion, which is not just to hold an opinion, but to live in accordance with it. So... How is religious freedom protected under Australian laws? Looking at that specifically Mm. saying, yes, people not only have a right to have a faith, but Mm. they also have a right to maintain and exercise their faith. So how is that then legislated for in Australian law? Well, we have an important constitutional protection of religious freedom in section 116 of the Constitution, which says that the Commonwealth is not to make a law for prohibiting the free exercise of any religion. Uh, and that is very similar to the fairly well-known provision in the First Amendment of the US Constitution about free exercise of religion. So that's uh, an important constitutional guarantee, one of the few individual guarantees actually in our Constitution, which governs the federal government. Now, um, while it's an important provision, it doesn't extend a across the whole of the Federation in the sense that state governments are not bound by Section 116 of the Constitution. So protection of religious freedom in the states is achieved in a couple of other different ways. 
Um, a couple of states actually have uh, human rights charters. Uh, we don't in New South Wales, but Victoria and the ACT has a human rights charter. But uh, around Australia, uh, there are many states, for example, who make it unlawful to discriminate against someone on the grounds of their religious belief. Okay. Interestingly, uh, uh, that's not the case in New South Wales. <laughs> in New South Wales, it's not a prohibited grant of discrimination, uh, someone's belief, but in other states it is. What are the issues? Let's let's uh, mm. drill down into this a little bit more. Sure. Can we can we actually cite some examples, albeit hypothetical, of some of the hot issues of this in Australia at the moment? Um, yes. So uh, one of the ones I mentioned is the question of uh, whether Muslims ought to be allowed to build mosques in certain areas. Yes. There's, uh, that's a, a, an important right that I think all Australians ought to be protecting for people to be able to meet together with their religious community and worship and uh, of course people are concerned about the spread of um, Islamic terrorism around the world and in Australia and that's a legitimate concern but that doesn't uh, shouldn't be used to tar every Muslim person and that's an important point that many uh, most Muslim people living in Australia are, are peace-loving people who want to just get on with their lives but meet together with people from their own group so that's one of the issues um, we then have debates about whether, uh, again, within relation to Islam, whether people should be able to wear head coverings or scarves at different contexts. And uh, again, I think we ought to be supporting people's right to live in accordance with their religious faith, subject to appropriate security checks where those are needed, etc. And that's things like going into financial institutions and service stations, and, and they're the things that are regularly uh, used as examples by people who oppose the wearing of, of the niqab or burqa or, or headdress. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So, so um, And we already have sufficient uh, provisions in the various laws to say that in certain circumstances uh, it's appropriate for people to remove head covering for identification purposes. Mm. But that doesn't mean that we need to have such a, a broad-based ban on the wearing of these head coverings or face coverings that is sometimes suggested in my view. So that's one area. Another area that's quite controversial is the question of same-sex marriage and the introduction of same-sex marriage in Australia because there are a number of people who have fundamental religious convictions that mean that they disagree with that and so there are going to be important issues arising as to how people's religious convictions in that area are accommodated by the general law. It sounds as though it's going to be a fascinating conference. I, I wish you well with it. It's happening Friday week, the 25th of September between 9 and 5 at the Life Sciences Lecture Theatre at the University of Newcastle. And if you want more information, go to lawschool at newcastle.edu.au. Associate Professor Neil Foster, thank you for the t your time and uh, all the best delving into these complex issues that we face. Thank you very much, Meryl.